Hey everybody, Leo Laporte here. It's time for Hands on Mac. This week we're going to show you a very easy way to save your Mac configuration, to update it, and even to install it on a brand new Mac using Brew. Hands on Mac comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Whether they're working in the office or remotely, visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Mac is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Protect your online privacy with one click. For three extra months free with a one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash H-O-M. Welcome back to Hands on Mac. Leo Laporte here. We're doing, this is kind of Black Diamond stuff, I understand. If you're new to the Mac, maybe this is one to skip. We talked last week about a command line tool I love called Brew, a package manager that lets us install a huge variety of, of command line and other utilities on our Macintosh. It's kind of like the, the geek app store. I also mentioned that there is an, a, a Brew command you should install called MAS, M-A-S. Once you've installed that, Brew can even install apps from the Apple Mac store, and it can also keep them up to date. Uh, it can also write out something called Brew File. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. First, let's take a look at the uh, Homebrew Bundle page. This is on GitHub, and this is an, uh, the uh, Brew File addition to Brew that will help you do everything we're talking about. But if you've already installed Brew, and if you haven't, I encourage you to go back to last week's episode and watch. It's easy to install a uh, a new copy of Brew the Brew Bundle uh, technology by simply adding the command Brew Bundle. If you haven't installed it before, it'll churn a little bit and it'll install. And that's what we're doing right now. We're tapping into a cask called Homebrew Bundle. Once you've installed the bundler. You can then dump all of the stuff you've installed with Brew over time in a Brew file. We don't have a Brew file yet, so let's create one with the bundle dump command. Brew bundle dump. And I'm going to add one very useful command line uh, switch called describe. So brew bundle dump dash dash describe. Now, something happened there. And we can very easily and quickly see what happened by catting a file called brew file. This was created in our home directory. And it is a very interesting file. This is a directory of everything that I've installed on my Mac using brew, including all the different brew commands. Remember I talked about CMake last week and Cowsay, my Emacs editor, Fish, my command line utility, Fortune, Glances, HTOP. We showed you those last week. Uh, all of those are already installed. So the brew bundle dump command dumped those out. And because I use dash dash describe, it actually tells me what each of these commands does. That's really handy in a comment so I know what I've installed. Then you'll also see uh, some... <laughs> Useful, let's see, Wine runs Windows applications. Some don't have descriptions. Arial is uh, an Emacs and Flux and Joplin. These are things I probably installed using other uh, techniques. And then you'll see some MOS stuff. Now, this is really interesting. MOS is a short command that I installed last week using Brew that installs apps from the Mac App Store. It does it by name, but also does it by ID. Now, normally, this is a pain in the butt to figure out what the names and IDs are of all the apps you installed in the App Store. Uh, look how easy this was. It was just a simple, simple command. Having done that, having created that dump file, I can now save it. It's not very big. You see, it's right there. Actually, let me do a long listing. 
It's uh, it's only a few thousand uh, kilo, few few thousand bytes, just two kilobytes in length. It's just a simple text file, but I can save that, put it on a thumb drive, save it to my iCloud or Dropbox, and I can use that brew file to restore my Macintosh with all of these apps the way it is today. It's probably a good idea to periodically update your brew file as you modify your Mac and install new apps. And now that we have brew file installed, we can do something else really cool. People who use the command line like to stay in the command line. We don't want to pick up the mouse and go to menus and go to a bunch of different menus to update our Mac. What we'd really like is a simple one-liner that could update everything on our Mac. Well, here's the good news. Because you've installed brew and you've got this brew file, it's very easy to do. This is going to be another SUDO command because we're going to need administrator privilege to do it. And the first thing I'm going to run is software update. Software update is provided by Macintosh, by Apple, by Macintosh. Uh, and it's basically a command line interface to the updater tool under the Apple. Actually, I really should say it the other way around. The updater tool under the Apple, when you do the software update, or actually now it's in the in the control panel, isn't it? It's just a front end to this command line. This is what Apple, what the Macintosh really is doing when you ask it to update the system. You're saying run the command line software update. And there's two little uh, switches there. I says give me information on everything that will be installed. In fact, if I just run it with just the I, and I, of course, because I used SUDO, I'm going to have to give it my administrator password. And it's going to say, well, in this case, nothing needs to be updated. If I add the A, it says, whatever needs to be updated, update. And I usually turn on another switch, dash, dash, or I'm sorry, single dash, verbose. And that says, as you're running, tell me, be, be verbose, tell me what you're doing. I'm also going to use the brew bundle command we set up last week brew bundle dash v that's going to install everything in my brew file you see that brew file up above and then as extras not necessary but i'm going to run blue brew cleanup because that's going to delete any unused libraries anything i don't need and then brew doctor at the very end is going to tell me if there's any other issues on my system Semicolons and fish are the same as the ampersand, ampersand, and bash. If you're using bash, you could use that to string a number of commands together. I'm going to make this one verbose as well. I never know whether it's a double dash or a single dash. So let's, uh, yep, it's, uh, it's not. <laughs> okay. So some of these things are already up to date. Anything not up to date, it will up to date, and it does this all automatically. You'll probably want to make a little command script, a command shell. If you're using fish, it's easy to make a fish function that runs that long line with just one word, say update. And then anytime you need to update your system, you type update, return, it'll ask you for a password, and it'll churn through your whole system as it's doing through mine right now, updating anything that's out of date. And I think that's really a handy way to keep your Macintosh updated. What will this update? Everything you installed via Brew, everything you installed from the Mac App Store, and everything Apple, any system update Apple says it needs you to update. So IA gives us all of the uh, software update. IA gives us all of the system updates. Brew Bundle gives us everything we've installed using the Brew file that we created every time we update our system, create a new Brew file, so it'll always have the latest. I even save Brew files from a variety of different systems uh, onto iCloud, so I have those available anytime I need them. And here we go. It's building. It's, a, it's setting it up, and that Mac is going to be completely up to date. The advantage of that, especially if you have multiple Macs, one at home, one at work, maybe a laptop too, you can have them using a single brew file all have the same set of tools installed. That's really, really handy. Someday, maybe next week, I don't know. I, this has been pretty heavy stuff. Maybe I'll save it for later. We'll do something a little simpler next week, something more graphical. But someday down the road, I'll show you how you can also save all of your configuration files for all of the different command line tools that you use so that you can also install those in one fell swoop. And when you've got that set up, it's really easy in just a matter of a few lines to set up a brand new Mac from scratch. And frankly, for me, that's the holy grail of uh, system automation. So I hope you enjoyed this look at Brew and that very useful additional command, Brew File. And I hope you enjoy Hands on Mac. I thank you for joining us. Our show today brought to you by...
ExpressVPN. When you're at home, your online activity can still be traced, even if you're running in an incognito mode. That's why when I'm home, I never go online without ExpressVPN. That way, ISPs can't see what sites you visit. And, of course, your data is 100% encrypted. So protect your online activity today with the VPN I trust to secure my privacy. Visit our special link at expressvpn.com slash H-O-M to get an extra three months free on a one-year package. expressvpn.com slash H-O-M. That's expressvpn.com slash H-O-M to learn more. Well, that's it for this week's Hands on Mac. A couple of black diamond tips for the last two weeks. We'll get to something a little bit simpler next Friday. I'll see you right here. I'm Leo Laporte on Hands on Mac. Bye-bye. Hey, folks. I'm Micah Sargent, host of Hands on iOS right here on the Twit Network. If you've got iOS devices or watchOS devices or tvOS device, any kind of Apple mobile device, you are going to want to check out Hands on iOS. It is the best way to make the most of those devices. I walk through tips, tricks, and everything in between, plus answer your questions. So be sure to check it out. It's twit.tv slash HOI.